Hello everyone and welcome back to Now I Know. I am Rupal and today we are talking about Southern Blotting. In the last video we talked about Western Blotting and Western Blotting was to detect protein molecules. Now when it comes to blotting methods we have spoken about it but briefly we will just go over few points. When we are working with macromolecules like DNA we perform Southern Blotting. When we work with RNA, we perform Northern blotting and we are working with protein, we follow Western blotting. So first we'll understand the word blot and blotting. Once again, we have spoken about it. But in case you're watching this video first, just to have an idea, the meaning of blot, blot is uh, referred to membrane. Blot is the membrane on which we are going to blot the bands that we are going to get we'll see this uh, in a moment now uh, i gave an analogy in last video that if you remember when we were kids we used to um, we used to blot images from uh, you know already existing image with butter paper or put oil on a paper and trace the image right something similar we have a gel and we are going to transfer the band from gel to the membrane and membrane here is called blot on which you're going to blot the band that is the blot so that in here it is membrane and this whole technique of transferring from gel to membrane is referred to as blotting so transfer of uh, macromolecules whether it is DNA RNA or protein when you transfer it from gel to membrane for further detection it is called blotting right so now we will start with the southern blotting now before we go ahead here's an important information for those who are preparing for csir net and gate exam an academy has come up with free live classes for understanding the topics of csir net unit 1 to 8 there is a live class series happening for super six important topics for csir net and combat series for gate 2021 now this will give you a very good idea about all the topics that are there you guys keep on asking so this is something that you must check it out these all are free live classes in case you have missed them the recorded version also will be available so you can have a look at the previous classes as well in order to unlock these free classes you will be requiring my code no 10 just add the code NO10 and you'll be able to access all the free classes that are available. Not only that, in case you plan to purchase any subscription, you will get 10% discount with my code NO10. All the links for the free classes will be available in the description box along with the code that you can use to access these free classes and avail the discount. Now let's understand the southern blotting step by step. Just like western blotting, here also we have five steps and we'll go over uh, all of them one by one. Let's say for example, you're working with a sample, you're interested in some gene and you want to isolate that gene for, uh, you know, first of all, you want to know whether it is present or not. If it is present, you want to isolate and work further on that particular gene. So you have a sample and you want to know whether that gene of interest is present or not. So what you're going to do? Let's say for example, you have a bacterial sample. The first thing you're going to do is isolate the DNA from that sample, right? So you're going to have DNA isolation. Let's say for example, you have done that and you have got some DNA. From this, let's say for example, this is your gene of interest. There is a gene of interest. You want to detect this particular gene. So what you will do is there is a DNA now from this you want to find out the gene of interest so what you need to do is it's it's a big dna you know it's a complete dna molecule first step is going to digest the dna and make fragments of it okay so you're going to do the first step that is dna digestion and the best method to do that we know is by the use of restriction enzymes what restriction enzymes does they identify specific sequences in the dna and go and digest them or cut them make them into pieces so you do the restriction digestion of the sample that you have isolated that is the first step dna digestion why we are doing this because now we are going to run it into the gel if you want to run it into the gel you cannot run the sample as it is right so you have restriction digestion that is the first step that will give you these small fragments of dna now here i have shown a different color this is your gene of interest let's say for example the second step is going to be gel electrophoresis we are working with dna so it is going to be agarose gel electrophoresis 
what you do in gel electrophoresis you have a gel you have a marker and you run your samples you load your samples in well this is going to be marker these are going to be your samples you run it on the gel and based on the molecular weight or based on the size of a fragment the dna fragments will get separated right so the fragments will get separated let's say for example this is your gene of interest corresponding to this particular marker so here is your uh, gene of interest that is present in your sample now what happens is this is in the gel number one you want to detect it you want to work with it right because it is in the gel embedded in a gel just uh, how we uh, saw in the western blotting method it is not accessible to you how you're going to access it right so you need to take it out elude this gel, uh, dna fragment out of the gel and take it on something where you can use it where you can detect it so the first thing we are going to do is we are going to take it out now what happens is in case of uh, southern blotting here we saw that we have isolated DNA we have fragmented into pieces but you see these are all double stranded and the way to detect DNA fragment presence is by the use of probes by hybridizing the probes probes means a known sequence of gene now let's say for example your gene of interest you will be knowing the sequence right you're interested in a gene you will be knowing a sequence for example the interested gene is a c g c for example this is my gene of interest i want to detect the presence of this gene in this sample so i need a probe that is complementary to it why because then only it can go and bind and it can show me that this is present and the probes are generally labeled it has to be labeled right because we want to detect it so the probes are labeled now for this prop to go and bind there has to be two things the probe has to be single stranded complementary to our gene of interest that has to be single stranded too otherwise how will it go and bind but here we have run the sample that is double stranded so in order to make this double stranded gene into single strand we are going to give one of the method that can denature the hydrogen bonds between the two strands right simple to understand so to break these hydrogen bonds and make the double stranded dna single stranded dna we are going to use mild alkali treatment basically we are going to use mild NaOH solution so what you do is after you run the gel you uh, keep the gel in uh, mild NaOH solution for a while so that what happens is NaOH will degrade all the hydrogen bonds and the double stranded uh, genes fragments that were present will now be single stranded that means now we can uh, you know have probe to go and bind those strands I hope this is easy to understand now once the treatment is done now the bands are all separated now comes the next step step number three that is blotting one of the most interesting part that we are going to do in this method once again why we are blotting it because it is in the gel and we cannot access it for detecting so we need uh, on something where we can detect it and the best way to do so is by transferring the bands on membrane that is our blot so the next step is blotting now we saw in the western blotting method we did the electrophoretic method to transfer the bands from gel to membrane by using the electrodes you know keeping the whole assembly uh, that sandwich assembly in transfer buffer put the electric current and the bands will transfer that is also again a method when it comes to uh, western blotting you can of course do the electrophoretic method where you put the gel towards the uh, negative electrode and uh, membrane towards the positive side and the bands will transfer from gel to membrane but another method that is widely used one of the conventional method that is by the action capillary action in this what we are going to do is the assembly goes something like this we have a transfer buffer in a tray the tray is filled with transfer buffer there's going to be a support in the bottom and generally this support is going to be a uh, glass plate so the first thing you're going to put is glass plate in the transfer buffer above this glass plate is going to be a blotting pa paper okay so there's going to be a blotting paper like this you can see the wick here that means the buffer can get up from this the portion that is dip inside blotting paper ka portion that is uh, dip inside now the buffer can slowly go up okay that's the reason why we keep it like this so there are going to be blotting paper over here above this blotting paper comes the gel first so this is my gel 
and above the gel we are going to put the membrane because we want the transfer from gel to membrane and when it comes to membrane in case of uh, southern blotting again you can use nitrocellulose uh, membrane or nylon membrane but nylon membrane is preferred more in case of southern blotting because of the better binding ability with the dna molecules so now we are going to keep the nylon membrane above the gel above the nylon membrane comes your blotting paper once again and then comes the paper towel because you know as the buffer will go up it will get soaked up over here and comes the weight so that the whole thing is properly placed what happens with the help of capillary action this buffer will start going up blotting paper to the gel to the membrane when it is passing from gel to the membrane it will also take the bands above it then blotting paper and paper towel when you see this whole assembly being wet your blotting paper and your uh, paper towels they are all completely soaked in buffer that means the process of transfer has occurred the complete buffer has gone up that means it has transferred the band from gel to membrane the next step is going to be now this is the assembly you can just have a look noted down for uh, your questions the next step is going to be from gel it has come to the membrane right now we need to detect on the membrane theek na abhi to easy ho gaya so now we are going to have the next step that is hybridization and washing in hybridization method as i said we are going to use prop because we know our gene of interest we know the sequence we'll have the complementary single stranded props that are again labeled okay it could be any of the label that can be detectable so we are going to use a prob a prob which is single stranded complementary to my gene of interest i am going to soak this membrane with the prob so what happens the prob will go and locate the gene of interest and will bind rest will not bind now we have to remove that and for that simply you do the washing so this particular binding over here is what you call hybridization hybridization of single stranded prop to a gene of interest so hybridization and washing that means you remove the extra unbound prop now comes the last step step number 5 that is detection based on the kind of a detection or based on a kind of a label that we have on a prop we are going to detect it it could be radiography it could be fluorescence it could be any color change that is visible so the last step is going to be detection of this particular prop it's very easy to understand actually you have a dna which has your gene of interest you digest the dna first because you need to run it on a gel once you run it on a gel it is double stranded you need to make it single stranded because it needs to bind to a prop once it is uh, single stranded you are going to blot it on a membrane where you can detect uh, to blot it maybe for example remember this capillary you have a blotting paper which is having wick that is dipped in a transfer buffer above that gel above that membrane above that again blotting paper paper towel wait and then uh, once the transfer happens the blotting happens on the membrane you need to detect it for detection you are going to use probes that are labeled and once the binding happens you do the washing and and then you carry out the detection based on the type of label that you have used on your prop so that's all it's very easy to understand it's whole another story when you're working in lab of course but uh, you know as theory it's easy to understand the principle and the procedure and one of the easiest topic that you can finish it off for csi or net exam so that's all for today maybe in the next video i'll try to cover uh, northern blotting also so that's all for now i hope this video is helpful and uh, i'll see you next time until then keep learning